Welcome to the Apostolic Encounter with the General Overseer of Top Ministries International, Rev. Osei Wusukovna. Sit back to enjoy the message. Kindly share this message to bless others. We bless the name of our Lord for another opportunity to be at his feet. And we thank God for his presence of us here today. Today we want to consider something very interesting. I call it David's story. But there are some aspects very, very necessary and important. They were just simply beyond this young man, David. He had no hand in it. But they were just the doing of a law. We want to be considering the scriptures. And let's get to Genesis chapter number 49. And let's take the verse number 10. Genesis 49. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. You see, this was a blessing. Jacob pronounced over his children, and this one was upon Judah. And he was saying, the lawgiver will come out of Judah. Or the king will come out of the Judah. But Shiloh must come first. Hallelujah. When you read things like this, where was David? What hand, ha what hand has he got to do with this? These are prophetic words declared before David was born. And interestingly, when you read the scriptures, there are many of the acts and the deeds of the law which were simply beyond David. But when we want to Consider the story of David. We got to go back to the prophetic. Where it was declared. That Judah. The kingdom will come out of Judah. And the king to reign. Will, Ju <coughs> will come from Judah. But David have no hand in it. I want you to see. That there is a hand of the Lord. Stretch out there. Doing things. Just simply be your human. Hallelujah. So, there's a prophecy that the kingdom will come. It will come out of Judah. But David had own hand in it. But he is a central figure in there. Now, uh, let's consider the scriptures to establish the truth. Mm. Let's get to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter number 46. And let's take the verse number 10. We want to see something. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times. The things that are not yet done. Saying my counsel shall stand. And I will do all my pleasure. God is called Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the ending. He declared the ends from the beginning. He knows the end before it starts. This is the almighty God. The all wise God. All knowing God. You see, so with him. He decides things how it must go. And how things should operate. And so in the case of David, there was a prophecy that Shiloh will come. Judah will come. And the kingdom will come out of Judah. Meanwhile, it was a priest who were leading Israel at that time. But at the time, these prophecies were fulfilled. We see a hand of God causing changes. Hallelujah. I wanted to see the story of David got to do from changing from the priesthood to the kingdom. And moving from the choice of man to the choice of God. Hallelujah. Remember that Saul was the first king of Israel. But he became king as a request of men. God appointed Saul as a king, but he was not to fulfill the prophecy. Actually, Saul was bound to fail. Because he would not fulfill scripture. The, the, the scripture never said that the kingdom would come out of Benjamin. No. It said it would come out of where? Judah. So if Saul was coming out from Benjamin... 
He was only a temporary holder. He was just passing through. And God, in his own way, will change over. Now, but the scripture we are saying here, that it is a counsel of the Lord that must stand. Amen. Let us hear what Nebuchadnezzar also had to say. That great king. He says something in Daniel chapter number 4. Let's take the verse number 34. And at a time, at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes unto heaven, and my understanding returned unto me, and I have blessed the Most High, and praised and honor him, that liveth forever, whose dominion is everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation, and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can say, stay his hand. None can stay his hand. Or say unto him, what doest thou? None can stay his hand. None can stay his hand. No man can stop God. He is the almost Almighty God, he reigns in the affairs of men and give everything to whom over he will give. And let's take another scripture. You see, we are laying these scriptures to reveal the characters of God and show his sovereign right and what he can do and will not do. Amen. Psalm number 75. Psalm 75 and then let's take Please let's get to Psalm 75. 7, 5, and let's take the verse number 6 and 7. For promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put up down one and set up another. You see, God put down who? Saul and set up David. Okay, so this is his right. David has got no hand in it. There is no manipulation with him. It is the choices of God. He makes his decisions and he is the judge. Hallelujah. Listen, changes happen. I'm making a statement, please. Take this very necessary. It's very important. Changes happen. In the realm of a spirit. And they manifest in the natural. Changes happen. In the realm of a spirit. And they manifest in the natural. When they are to be changes. It will happen in the realm of a spirit first. The things seen came out from the unseen. You see. So when you read this scripture. Here was David. A young man. And let's get into the story. The eighth child of J.C. taking good care of his father's flock. He was there, just doing his business at his own corner. Amen. And God had decided to change Saul. God had decided to change Saul. That is God's plan. That is God's idea. Because why? God, Saul will not submit to God and do what he wants. Okay, and so God told him, when you read 1 Samuel chapter number 13 and then verse number 14. 1 Samuel 13, 14. You see, when you read the scripture, God wants to just change Saul. Why? Because Saul will not do what God wants. Amen. And God decided to change him. Let's get to the verse number 14. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but now the kingdom let's start from 13 and someone said to Saul thou hast done foolishly thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God which he commanded thee for now for now would thy kingdom have established that thy kingdom upon Israel forever but now the kingdom shall not come to thy 
Thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people. Because thou hast not kept the word that which the Lord commanded thee. You see, where was David? He was not even known. But God said, I have found him. Hallelujah. Nobody has seen David yet. But God said, I have found him. May you be that brother who are genuine and sincere before God. And may God find you at your own corner. Even when you are doing your own thing. When you read the scripture, he was at the backside of the desert taking care of sheep. No camera followed him. Nobody knew where he was. In fact, nobody have even seen him. Praise the Lord. But God have found him. May God find you. May your heart be right with God and walk with him such that God will find you and God will begin to do things with your life. Hallelujah. So I have sought him a man after my own heart. Mm. So Saul was messing around and God was worried. He went about looking for somebody whose heart will be right with God. And he found David. This David at that age was 17 year old lad. A young boy. Uh, taking care of the flock. And he was at the backside of the desert. Nobody knew him. Not even in his father's house. But God had found him. What am I saying? You see, that I think God will do. Men will not understand. Because if you are going to search for a king, will you go for that young boy? 17 year old. But God looked not like men. Because when they went to the house, father's house, the prophet said, he looked at Eliab, that tall soldier, strong man, before him. He said, yeah, this is a lost anointing. He said, no. You look to men like a man. I look to the heart. My goodness. May God find your heart right with him. May he see that you are not just like anybody, but you are somebody whose heart is right with God. The issue is, it is God who sees. Mm -mm. You didn't hear that one. I say it is what? God who sees. He sees beyond the natural. He sees beyond the natural faces. He sees beyond your situation. He sees beyond things surrounding you. He sees beyond and get into the heart, the heart, the heart, where decisions and choices are made. Yes, God saw his heart. May God see your heart that you are right with him. Praise the Lord. If you are sent out there to make choices, what will you do? You look to beautiful faces, nice dressed gentlemen who come around. Oh, this guy is nice. Oh, I think he can do the job. He look good. Is it about looking good, appearing? That is a decision of man. That is your choices. But God just goes simply beyond that. He sees the heart. He sees what no man can see. He sees those hearts which are broken. He sees those hearts which are humble. He sees those who have prepared themselves to serve the Lord. And so he has found David at the backside of the desert. No one can see him. He was not even known to his father. Nobody knew. He, in fact, he didn't know himself. Hallelujah. But then, God now decided to send the prophet to the house. At that meeting, something happened. There was a meeting, a high priest, a high meeting appointed with the prophet. And someone himself was coming to the father's house. But David would not be invited. No. He was not in the natural, he was not of that status. So they look at, when they are calling man, where is it David? Hallelujah. But he was a choice of God. You see, I want you to look at something. Saul was rejected, but he was tall, strong, stout than anybody. But he was rejected. Why? He would not obey God. David was accepted. A small young lad. 
at the backside of a desert. But God had found him. And now God brought him in there. So someone went in there. When he saw Eliab, he said, oh, the Lord's anointed. He said, no, this is not the Lord's anointed. Shaman came and said, no, this is not the Lord. And I said, Father, don't you have any other... Oh, oh, there is a small boy who is taking care of the floor. He said, run and go and bring him here. We will not sit down until he comes. Hallelujah. And so they brought David in his father's house. They brought this young guy, David, and he was taking care of the flock. And very interestingly, when he came in, he looked very young. And God said, this is my choice. Anoint him. First Samuel chapter number 16. 16, 13, and then verse number 13. Please write it down. Take note of it. We want to consider the 16, 13, and then the verse number 14, these two scriptures. And I'm going to make a point there. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Listen, when he was anointed in the midst of his brethren, the spirit of the Lord came upon him. It was not a ritual. It is a former unction of a spirit being poured upon him. And God's spirit came upon Saul, came upon David from that day forward. Hallelujah. And now, let's get to the verse 14. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. An evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. I want you to see something. There was a change. Come on. Say with me, change. There was a change in the realm of a spirit. The spirit of the Lord had moved upon David. An evil spirit had taken over from Saul. I was changing the spirit. Hallelujah. If God wants to do things, he knows what he do. The change has taken place. But it's here to manifest. Hallelujah. In the realm of a spirit. David was anointed. King of Israel. And Saul was rejected. Being king. But that change could not manifest immediately. Hallelujah. Why? The scriptures must be fulfilled. The scriptures must be all. Fulfilled. God has his own way of dealing with men. But he will not break the scriptures. Hallelujah. In Israel for them, any of the priests who come to leadership, he must be at the age of 30. And so in the kingdom, God needed a mature people to lead. So for the next 13 years, they will be in training on the soil. And the instructor will be who? <laughs> Saul, who hated him and wanted to kill him. But listen, that change is very important and very necessary. Beyond the natural, things happen. This is what I want you to see. If God is about to do something, he will alter it in the realm of a spirit. Things will happen. When things change, uh, there was a shifting. The spirit of the law has come upon David. An evil spirit is gone upon who? Saul. Change have taken place. Yet to manifest. But that is how God's dealings are. Hallelujah. And if he is about to do something, exactly that is what happened. My prayer is that may the spirit of God come upon you and may you be transformed and be changed and turned into another man. Was it not Saul whom the spirit of God came upon in 1 Samuel chapter number 10 verse 9, he was turned into another man. Yes. But when he messed around, the spirit of the Lord left him. May you not be that brother where the spirit of the Lord will leave you. Be that brother who will be anointed with the unction of a spirit. And may God order yourselves in the path of righteousness 
for his name's sake. And may you, be, you, may you be led by his spirit in all things. But all these things, there's something, I'm making a statement. They were simply beyond David. He had no hand in it from the prophetic, from all the stories that are unfolding. He had no hand in it. In fact, he could not manipulate any stage. But they were all being fulfilled. That is the sovereign work of God. And God was at work to purpose, to bring to pass his purpose and his intent. He is at work. He is able to set up one and to put down another. Psalm 75 verse 6 and 7. Okay. So God is working and he is working the things out. Now David is anointed but not without any throne. Amen. With all these anointing, God, he was also in God's training school. Something very interesting. By the time he came before Saul, in first, first Samuel chap, chapter 17, let's start from 29. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he speak unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, why cometh thou hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thy heart. For thou art come down that thou might see the battle. And David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? I, I love that scripture. Mm. And David said, oh, what have I now done? Up to this stage. David had done nothing. He had done nothing. In fact, he was there at the request of his father. It was his father who sent him there to bring food to them at the battlefront. Okay? He never planned to see any war. But his elder brother was accusing him wrongly. But he said, and David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? Is there no reason? The things that are happening to me, they are beyond me. I have done nothing. They are only happening. They are events unfolding in my life, which are just simply beyond me. I got nothing to do with it. But God has found him. God has anointed him. God has trained him. At the backside of the desert, God allowed sheep when he was taking care of the flock a lion and a bear came against him why would God allow a lion and a bear to come against David if not nobody will sanction his bow the bow that will bring his promotion the bow that will make him king over Israel that bow that he might kill Goliath will never be sanctioned and because of that, God was preparing at the backside of the desert. Brother, I don't know where you are. You may be going through many things, but God is preparing you for your assignment. Hallelujah. May God help you to understand that his hand is upon it all. And he's working things out. And now, lion and a bear came against him and he rose up against it and killed them. So when he came before Saul, let's get to 34. David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a, a lamb out of the of flock. And I went out after them, and smote him, and delivered it out of, of his mouth. And when he rode against me, I caught him by the beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both a lion and a bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he have defiled the armies of the Lord. David said, and David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of, a, out of the paw of a lion and out of the paw of a bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul so said unto David, Go, the Lord be with thee. Now listen. It's interesting, David recounting those stories. 
They were men for his training, yes. But that became his CV to give him promotion. And before Saul, the bout was sanctioned that he now can go and contest with who? Goliath. And he knew that he will kill Goliath, but not by his strength, but by the Lord. Hallelujah. And it's interesting when you read this account. I want you to see something. There are things that happen to us, they are beyond us. There are events that may come in our life, they are simply just beyond us. They may not be in control. The timing and the season. Why should David come in at that time? Yes, the battle for his promotion was set up. Goliath had been there for the next 40 days. And David must appear. Hallelujah. So his father was sending him. You see, all those things are the doing of the Lord. I want you to see, may the hand of the Lord be upon you. And may God begin to cause you to walk in his precepts. And let the doing of the Lord manifest in you. It is not by might nor by power. But by your spirit of the law, God ordered every event in his life. He has no hand in it. Not even the timeline for the battle to fight Goliath. He had no hand in it. He never planned to be at the war front. But he was sent there. He came in there and the hand of God was upon him. May God's hand be upon you. And at the season and their timing. The time for your promotion. The battles you need to fight. May you be ready for it. Even in this season, when you don't even know where you are going, may it be the training period where God is equipping you by his spirit, where he's ordering you in the things of God, where you are being set up for a great victory. May God's grace and mercy be upon you. Brother, there are things who are simply beyond human, beyond the natural, beyond our ability. But God reigns in the affairs of men. That we may know that the most high reigns in the affairs of men and other events that he has set us for. He has set you for progress. He has set you to overcome. You are set for victory. You are set to overcome. But it's by the doing of the law. May we always remember that we need to submit and humble ourselves to the power of God and to the hand of God that he will work things out. May the hand of the Lord be upon you to work thing out. Look, I look at the timing and say, oh, awesome. How come? How does it work? There is a God who reigns in the affairs of men. May he reign in your life. May he order your steps. May he keep you going. And may he be blessed because he is with you. David will kill Goliath. The woman will sing his song. His promotion will come. It will come with persecution, but he will learn the lessons and grow. Hallelujah. May you be that brother, that sister, whose God's hand is upon, whom God has found, whom God is operating, events beyond the scenes, events beyond you, things your eyes have not seen. You can't have it imagined, but God is operating. Be that brother. Turn away from sin and lay hands on and the fear of God. And may he guide you. I want to be praying with you now. Oh, brother, sister, hear me. Today my prayer is very simple. May you be that brother whom God has found. And may his hand be upon you. To manipulate your seasons and your timings. Thank you for having time with the General Overseer. You can follow Reverend Russo Kobana on social media for prayers and counseling. Please call plus 233-244-61-4965. Thank you and God bless you.